Deathbound is a new Souls-like action RPG set in a world where science and faith clashes, being developed by Trioforce Studio, published by Tate Multimedia. Deathbound offers a lot to the Souls-like genre with interesting gameplay and mechanics, and in this review of the pre-alpha demo that I received from trial for studio thank you guys for the key as well i would like to go over the gameplay visual and sound designs and just the overall enjoyment that deathbound can offer players who are looking for a brand new Soulsborne in 2024 let's go over the overall gameplay of deathbound which offers an engaging and new mechanics that one can see from most souls likes i feel with most Soulsborne games the main mechanic of the game can help differentiate itself from other souls games Deathbound offers a party system, which is a first for any Soulsborne game. Essence Masters are the game's way of classes, and each Essence Master has quite the bit of lore behind them that will tag along for your journey, and you can have up to four members to your party, each with its very own way of handling enemies. In order to add members to your party, you must do the morphing with the essences which allows players to absorb the essence and they get their very own health and stamina and if one of the members die then that is game over so you essentially have up to four different tries to make sure to survive if not then that's it back to the bonfire you go to add to this mechanic your health is also connected to your stamina so the more damage you take the less stamina you have until you heal which is a very interesting mechanic because you really have to watch how your health bar is watch how much stamina you have because on that given level it's it, i caught myself in quite a few moments where i ran out of stamina and not paying attention to that. oh i have no health it kind of sucks a little bit but i love that it's adding a more difficult challenge to a given problem and that's something that Soulsborne games are quite known for, adding another obstacle to an already difficult game. I did speak about healing though, in which healing is done by other by either items or the lifesteal mechanic uh, that, if I'm not mistaken, the rogue, the rogue-like character has, which basically mainly using another essence master's damage to heal the party. But let's explain who exactly are the Essence Masters. So Deathbound gives you plenty of time to get familiar with them. For an example, your main party team that you'll get like right from the jump, like from playing like the first like 20 to 30 minutes of the game is Agros of Mariva, which is the tank class with high poise. Anna Lepus is a more of a rogue class focusing on backstabs and ranged attacks. Olivia Hines is the spell cast through the group, which can use lightning, fire, and as well as cold damage. There is Throne, which is the more balanced of them all, which he can be able to parry and repulse attacks. But throughout your time, you will find more Essence Masters throughout your time, and you can be able to craft a quite a powerful team. Speaking of that quite powerful team, there is another huge mechanic, uh, which happens during combat, which is the Sync Morph Strikes. Morphing is the action of switching between your party, and as you deal damage, you can build up your sync meter, which is centered around the conflicts and synergy of your party. Basically, because of the massive amount of lore that is behind the scenes, every character is affected by that given lore, which then plays into how they're able to play during gameplay. So your party's values and morals will conflict with each other and it will basically give them a debuff. Or if they believe or have the same morals and values, then they would get a synergy, which is basically a passive buff throughout the entire time of playing. Each Essence Master has a way of leveling up, which is at this game's version of pretty much a bonfire. But it's a little cube that you can find. I think they call it the Phalodactyl or whatever. I saw it once and I was just like, Ah, oh, that's nice, but it's basically the game's bonfire, right? And at this bonfire, this allows you to level up characters, swap out your party, and improve your equipment. The skill tree is also there, which basically is a decently big skill tree. Like, it's pretty massive for what it is, and but it's not like Path of Exile massive or anything like that. It's just quite simple, but you can definitely tell there's some depth in it. The party shares the tree, so each essence master can be upgraded and you can work on specific builds 
with that as his master. Now, the mechanics are well executed, providing smooth but interesting experiences that kind of kept me hooked to finish the demo. I think I finished the demo in less than two hours. Last time I checked, I'll have to go re-double check that. Deathbound offers a good balance between challenging enemies and accessibility for both casual and experienced gamers to souls likes. But even in pre-alpha, the game's visuals and sound design are really well done. I could tell by the time of release that this was super polished just by playing throughout my two hours of gameplay. But visually, Deathbound does excel in capturing players' attention as this game is ran on Ultra Settings, which I was running on Ultra Settings. I have a 3060 Ti for the graphics card. Game ran smooth. Did not have a single problem. My FPS never dropped. Like, it was literally overall a smooth experience. Even if, like, for a pre-alpha demo, I was very shocked. A lot of, like, a lot of these demos have, like, a lot of bugs in them. Now, yes, there are some bugs in the game. I normally mainly noticed it within gameplay-wise. Like, it would be something small, like, I would just kill an enemy. All of a sudden, he dies, but he comes back up standing. Like, the character model just did not know what to do. But, um... The graphics are amazing as well, and it fits the world building the game is trying to tell us. The environment are nicely designed and definitely gives this Dark Souls exploration Metroidvania vibes. It has that verticality, but it also has that horizontal like level design. Even the characters are really well designed as well. It plays like each design of each character plays into their backstory. And which when you're gathering more members of the team, you get to see some of their memories and absorb them to be as an essence master. And now they'll be on the team. And then of course, if their views or values conflict with each other, you will see that right away because there is an indication, the orange bar next to their team, it means, oh, they don't mix well. There, you will see a, you know, a debuff on their character sheet. If it's blue or green, whichever the color looks like, that lets you know that there's they have good center uh, synergy basically meaning boom you get massive buffs all the way through the sound design as well of deathbound really contributes to the atmosphere that deathbound is trying to convey the voice acting as well uh and when specific moments happen it sounds great even some like like some of the more serious moments of the game i could definitely tell whoever was voice acting really put their heart out into this so it definitely doesn't feel like some you know seven dollar game that has horrible voice acting like no they the dev team really got some decent people to really get the voice acting going i really felt some of the moments <laughs> when playing but i'm gonna just let that for you guys to play because that'll be a little bit of spoiler territory but i love the part of uh, the banter that the party gives to each other to really add more life to the team the way the weapons hit enemies you can really feel the weight of each blow like overall the sound and visual design is amazing uh the technical performance is not bad keep in mind pre-alpha demo like we haven't even hit full demo yet or even early access or whatever we want this is pre-alpha there's so much more that they're probably doing they did say the game is supposed to release this year i just don't know when but man for what i've seen so far for the, the almost two hours of gameplay this game has a lot of potential now let's talk about the story so going a little bit over the story overview Deathbound's story focused on, on eons ago. Goddess Life had deceived her sister, which is Goddess Death, to steal her powers to create the First Men, a race of beings that are unable to die. Alive for thousands of years, they erected a powerful and advanced civilization. With magic-like technology and continent-spanning cities, the Goddess of Death will not settle for being deceived and began to slowly seduce these immortal people. Being overwhelmed by an existence that would never end, eventually they gave up their immortality and their society collapsed completely overnight. Centuries later, a new civilization emerged from the wreckage of the old world and with it, the desire, the desire to deceive death once again. For years, the SS Masters, a zealot sect of the scholars of the forbidden knowledge, have tried to perfect a ritual that, with the use of the first men's long-lost technology, will allow for eternal life, but at a not-so-great cost. The demo showcases a small bit of what exactly the church 
of Def, which is one of the main factions, has done to the city. But let's go on over to my overall verdict of Deathbound. Deathbound is an exceptionally great game. I love the innovation of making a party system being a first for Soulsborne's games. The combat is fun and enjoyable and experience with the addition of more strikes that really vamps up the way combat works so it's not your typical attack, dodge, or roll that you see in a lot of Soulsborne games. With each character represents a different aspect of Deathbound as well as a unique skill set and combat style. I love that a lot of developers who are making Soulsborne games are now looking more towards uh, Bloodborne because like that's the first thing I like playing the game is the first thing I realized like the there's no rolling it's just dodging and adding some elements of like Bloodborne into their games I'm really loving that people are still keeping the spirit of Bloodborne alive party system and with each member having their alliance and enemies being party with characters of the same faction provides stat buffs while pairing rivals together will produce debuffs. Compromise and strategize will be required to get the best out of your party, allowing players to craft playstyles to their liking. That goes back to the skill tree and synergizing who works with who. Enemies were buggy as in when they die, like I told you, the models would just come up and just stand there. I didn't really notice too many bugs. I didn't notice a little bit of motion blurring motions, which I didn't think I can change that. I didn't see it in the settings. But other than that, the game looks great. This game has amazing potential. It, I had an amazing, enjoyable, fun experience. The game will be dropping for the Steam Next Fest. I think it starts February 5th. And I recommend you guys to definitely check it out. This is probably going to be one of the coolest, intuitive, ARPG Soulsborne games experiences that we will have in quite some time. Like Liza P really added that depth. We had Elden Ring. We have a couple other Soulsborne games out there, but this I feel like it's going to be one of those top contenders as like best Souls, one of the best Soulsborne games. I can't wait to see for uh, at full lunch because uh, they're stating that this game will have 15 hours of greatness. 15 hours of you can complete the entire game. I already finished two of those hours of the game, beat the first boss, had plenty of fun. The first boss was a little underwhelming, but I feel like that's kind of with most first bosses in most games. Underwhelming, you're supposed to kind of like, and it showed like the different stages. He had a, like a three stage uh, form of an attack. Like there was a lot that they really showed for this. But like I said, the first boss was kind of like, eh, he was kind of trash. I'm going to be honest with you. Very predictable nothing too crazy but i feel like as the bosses go on they start to get some of that why souls born games are deemed as some of the hardest games to play but let me know what you guys think about deathbound is this something you guys want to check out mary said steam next fest february 5th keep that on your calendars make sure to download it I, this game is amazing i like it has potential i would like to see what rest this game has to offer once it gets polished up and full blown release but i want to hear what you guys think about it let me know in the comment section below make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to check out any more previews on demos then i will leave the playlist right here and as always been your host chaos dtv here at chaotic inc signing out peace Manifest, I don't sleep, that's so weak, don't plan to rest I'm from a hood where you die if you don't pack a vest No culinary degrees, but whipping crack the best Chefing, hard times taught lessons Praying every night to pull up and park benzes uh, What's my home is what you call trenches You wouldn't last a day seeing life through all lenses uh, It's all tension, no sun, it raining plenty Full time job, still can never make a penny I ain't rapping